that recording. Let's let that go. Um, so with that, uh, we're gonna go over our agenda real quick. So let me share my screen with you. All right, do you guys see that agenda there? Yes, awesome. Uh, so we are starting right on time here. At 4.30, we've got our welcome. That's what we're going through right now. At 4.40, we're gonna have our academic presentation. We're gonna have time for question and answer sessions as well. Um, and then we will have a final closing around 5.20 um, and we'll roll back out into your evenings. So that is the agenda for our evening together. Um, let's see if I have anything else to mention. So basically we wanna encourage you to ask any questions that you have throughout the program. So you can post those in the chat for our moderators um, and we will have time for Q&A. So make sure that you're sending those into the chat so that we have plenty of questions to go through with you all. Um, so with that, we're ready to get started and I'm gonna have Ariel go ahead and introduce herself as one of our moderators. Awesome. Hello, everyone, and welcome to your session for pre-nursing and pre-dental hygiene. Like Bridget said, my name is Ariel Moore, and I am one of the moderators for this event tonight. Um, so as mentioned previously, uh, this event is meant to give you more information about the programs that you are admitted to or maybe that you're just interested in. Um, so throughout the program, um, you are welcome to use the chat feature if you're tuning in here on the Zoom meeting with us, or if you're watching on Facebook Live, you can also submit your questions in the chat feature on the live. Um, but uh, we will have a Q&A um, at the end, so we might save some of your questions uh, for that Q&A, but we also have um, Allie who will be here to answer some questions in the chat. Um, at this time, I will turn it over to Daniel Darlin from the Student Success Center. Hi there. Uh, thanks, Ariel. Uh, so my name is Daniel Darland. Um, I'm an academic counselor, um, part of exploratory and transition advising in the Student Success Center. Um, I'm going to start sharing a presentation I've got here. Let's see, this should be what I want. Um, yeah, so the, the goal for, uh, for us, we want to talk about what does it mean to be uh, pre-dental hygiene or uh, pre-nursing at U of L. Um, so I'm going to talk about um, just introduction to exploratory and transition advising, which is the advising group that I am a part of, um, some information about those two majors, uh, the dental hygiene and nursing programs, um, going over admission requirements, um, specifics on math sequencing, um, and how placement testing fits into that. Um, some kind of ideas about what advising will look like for those two programs, um, the process of going from the pre status into the lower division of either of those programs, um, some tips for getting ready for your orientation advising um, coming up in the summer, and then um, like, like we said, the time for the questions at the end. So um, just some ideas about what we're going to do with and, and just to kind of um, echo what's already been said. Um, any questions are welcome in the chat as we go through. So um, don't hesitate to type something in as, as we keep going. Uh, yeah, all right. So, pause really quickly. <laughs> great. Um, so I just wanted to introduce myself. I am Diamond Davies. I also work the, with the Exploratory and Transition Advising Team. Um, so any questions in the chat, um, I am going to interrupt Daniel and ask those questions. Um, if there are something that um, are, deals with our presentation, um, or I may save them to the end um, if, if we can get some of those kind of questions answered during the presentation. Um, so I'll be assisting Alyssa. So um, if you want to double check and make sure that the Facebook questions are put into the chat box, I will monitor the Zoom side for us so we can make sure we hit everything. Awesome. Yeah, so just uh, just some idea about exploratory and transition advising and what that is. Um, so if you're coming to UofL as a pre-nursing or pre-dental hygiene student, um, you will be advised by exploratory and transition advising. Um, and so as a team, we help students who are coming into UofL, uh, either they're not sure about their major, so they're coming in undecided, um, or students that are working towards meeting admission requirements 
to another college or school at U of L. So going into the School of Nursing or to the uh, the Dental Hygiene Program. Uh, so that's uh, that's the situation we're working with today. Um, and we work with students kind of all across this uh, spectrum. So we kind of use this graphic at the bottom to represent where students might be that we work with. So from the, the left side, students that are completely undecided, um, all the way to the right, students that are very decided but not yet admitted to the program that they're, that they're in. So um, you may feel pretty decided today. Um, you may move to the left as you, you know, continue to think about college or as you go through your first few semesters. Um, but the goal is ultimately for us to work with you uh, to move all the way to the right, uh, where you are decided, um, you know, you found that major that's a good fit for you. But with the understanding that a lot of students do think they're decided initially um, and realize that they aren't. And that's a really common experience to have. Um, and we're ready to meet you wherever you're at in that process. Um, so um, academic advising, that's the, the role that I play. That's the job that I do. So just some ideas about what you could expect from an academic advisor. You'll meet with an academic advisor at orientation and then you'll have one that you'll meet with um, that you'll be assigned to once you start at U of L. So we'll help you explore majors, careers, um, and kind of your overall goals. You know, not everything we want to do in life is about a major or about a career, uh, but figuring out a way to make that work and make that happen in life is, is something your advisor can also help with. Um, we will help with specific courses. You know, what's the specific requirement I need, need to meet to do X, Y, or Z? Um, you know, a lot of that kind of nuts and bolts things have to happen. Um, and so we'll, we'll work on figuring that out together. Um, we also, you know, because of the exploratory kind of element, uh, working on self-discovery, you figuring out more about who you are, what you want out of life, um, you know, that's something we'll also go through with you as a college student. Um, what are the different choices that you have to make? Because ultimately, you're the one that makes the choices. So we'll lay them out for you, help you see, you know, if you choose A, here's what could happen. If you choose B, here's what could happen. Um, but then kind of setting you up to make the most best informed decision that you can. Um, and then we'll help you track, you know, how you're going um, through that process. Are you getting closer to your goals? Are the goals maybe not, not coming together? Do we need to reevaluate those and start thinking about other, other directions? And so that's the, the role that the advisor plays for you. All right, so let's let's talk some specifics about these two programs, dental hygiene and nursing, and you know, grouping them together because in a lot of ways um, they are similar. There's a there's a good amount of overlap between the classes that you take, as well as in the admission requirements and um, the the way the programs work. So um, they are both four year programs that are split um, into both an upper and a lower division. Um, I should have done that backwards, a lower division and an upper division. Um, and the idea there is that the lower division is the, the first half of the program. So the first two years, if you're thinking of college as a, a four year experience, and then the upper division would be those second two years. Um, for both programs, lower division is when you really do fundamental courses. Um, so Biology and chemistry are both key subjects for these programs, so a, a good chunk is that. Um, you also have math requirements, um, and then just the general education requirements that every student completes. So your, your basic writing and public speaking, uh, those sorts of courses. Um, and so all of that makes up the lower division, um, which is something that any student can do as long as they can meet the the GPA requirements, the admission requirements for the lower division. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, upper division though, is a, a more competitive uh, situation. There's a limited number of seats for both programs. Um, for dental hygiene, um, there are 30 seats um, and that's a fall only start. So um, students are able to apply, apply for the dental hygiene program um, for one of those 30 seats. For nursing, um, there are 100 seats, um, and that's a fall and a spring start. So there are 100 students that are admitted into the upper division in the fall, and then another 100 in the spring. So for both of those, um, it, because there's a limited number of seats, it's very competitive. Um, there is a GPA component, especially 
uh, but then some other elements that go into that upper division admission. So it's, it's a good thing to recognize on the front end that um, you know, being admitted into the lower division, um, progressing through and completing that lower division curriculum doesn't guarantee that you're moving on to upper division. You know, you're competing against other students for a limited number of spots. Um, I will say, um, if you're concerned that, oh, I'm coming in pre-nursing, pre-dental hygiene, um, and you know, I'm not starting immediately in the program, we do find that in terms of the, the rate of students making it into upper division, that the, the uh, pre-unit students get in at about the same rate as the students that start their freshman years in lower division. So there's not a significant difference in your ability to get into upper division between the two starting points. Um, so let's, yeah, let's look just kind of more directly at the dental hygiene admission requirements. So um, to be admitted directly, um, so it's a high school GPA of 2.8 or higher, um, an ACT composite of 20 or higher. Um, now, if you're if you apply test optional, um, and so you don't have an ACT score that's being factored in here, unfortunately, dental hygiene does not use an Accuplacer score for admission purposes. Um, they are reviewing students that you know would have an Accuplacer score, but not an ACT. But there's not a hard and fast number that that program is using, so it's difficult. We can't really say one thing specifically. Um, but if you are between now and um, the uh, start of the fall semester, if you are still going to take the ACT, it is possible, you know, to meet that um, 20 plus and um, change your admission status um, from the, the pre dental hygiene to um, to dental hygiene lower division. Um, you can still opt to use your scores if you if you apply test optional. They can still be used for placement, and we'll talk more about the math placement element. Um, and it doesn't affect your admission status um, if you if you do opt to do that. And so you would just want to talk with admissions more about making sure your um, scores are included and that you've submitted those. Um, the nursing admission requirements, um, similar in some ways, um, the, the GPA there is a 3.0 high school GPA, um, an ACT composite of 22, math ACT of 22, um, but for nursing, there is an Accuplacer score that can be used as well. So um, on the math Accuplacer, that, that test is actually uh, split into three parts. QRAS is the, the bottom third of the, the test score. Uh, and if you score a 250 in that QRAS section or higher, uh, which would be any score in the, the two higher tiers, uh, then you, that actually works you know, the same as that math ACT score. Um, and then you also would need the reading Accuplacer score of, of 244 or higher. So, so there is an Accuplacer route, um, Accuplacer plus GPA to be admitted into nursing lower division. So if you haven't done the Accuplacer yet, um, most folks probably wouldn't have. Um, once you have taken it, it could, it could uh, adjust your admission status. Okay. Um, not seeing any questions come in so far, so I'm gonna keep rolling. Um, so the, the math sequencing element, um, so this you know, ties in with the, the placement. Um, so the programs are similar again, um, but there's a slight difference. So for the dental hygiene program, there are two math courses that are accepted for the, the gen ed math requirement. So those are math 105 or math 111. Uh, math 105 is quantitative reasoning. Math 111 is college algebra. Um, for nursing, though, that is only met by Math 111 or higher. So um, these can be met with more advanced math courses, but uh, Math 111 is the, the level that we're, we're shooting for. Um, there is, for both programs, also a statistics course requirement. Um, math 109 is the, the main course that's used to meet that requirement. Um, but there actually are some other substitute statistics courses, but they're at the same level um, in terms of, of placement. Um, oh, Jordan, Jordan, I see your question in the chat about Accuplacer. Accuplacer- I was just about the, to interrupt you. <laughs> okay, yeah, Accuplacer is just the name of the math placement test that we use at UofL. 
Uh, so um, I think I may have a, another slide about how to how to take the Accuplacer, where to find the information for it. Um, so we'll, I think that's yeah. maybe. I believe next. that's the next slide, Daniel. Yeah. Um, so, so you'll see with the, the kind of slight differences here, if you're maybe thinking I, I could do dental hygiene or nursing, I'm not totally sure which one, um, then the goal would definitely be to, to aim for the math 111 course. But if, if you definitely are aiming for dental hygiene and not nursing, it, it would be okay to make math 105 be your goal. Um, the other two courses that you see there, the Gen 103 and Gen 104, those are uh, developmental math courses. So depending on what your placement scores are, you may need to take those courses first um, because you're going to, uh, you may need to take those courses first to be able to take the other courses. So you need a certain uh, math placement score, which would be a, a math ACT score, a math SAT score, or an Accuplace or math score. Um, to be able to take one of those courses. So if you start in Gen 103, that may be the course that you place into initially. Um, you would need to complete Gen 103, um, then Gen 104, and then you'd be able to go on to Math 111. Um, so the, the nice thing is that even though this is a, a requirement, um, it's a gen ed, you need to do it. There are not, there are not other courses in the program's lower division relying on you finishing the math requirement. So, so if you need to start out in Gen 103 or Gen 104, there are plenty of other courses to take while you work on um, getting through your math sequence. Uh, another thing, it, it is possible to take Gen 103 and Gen 104 in the same semester. They're self-paced courses. So you can progress through both of them in, in one semester. Um, but at most, it's going to take you three semesters to go through a math sequence like this. Um, Fatima, I, I want to go ahead and answer your question um, about being pre-nursing. Does it mean it would take an extra year to graduate? So um, all you need to do, there's not a difference initially in the courses that you can take. So if you come in as a pre-nursing student, you're able to take the same courses that a lower division nursing student can take in their first semester. Um, so all, all you would need to do is meet the requirements, which we'll come to, um, to move from pre-nursing into lower division. So it's just a matter of being able to progress through the courses and you're not going to be able to, you're not going to be locked out of certain courses because you're a pre-nursing student. Um, another question um, about if you don't take the Accuplacer, are you automatically enrolled in Gen 103? Um, you would need to enroll in Gen 103. Um, so there's no, no one's automatically enrolled in that um, without doing anything. When you meet with an advisor at orientation, that's just, that would want, be one of the courses that you all would work on getting enrolled in. All right, I wanna move on from math um, to just talk about placement testing. So for one, uh, you know, if you haven't already taken the ACT, if you have that still in the pipeline, um, you know, go ahead and do it. You know, that ACT score can still be used for math placement, um, but you can also do that math placement with the uh, Accuplacer. So the Accuplacer, like I said, that's the name of the placement exam. Um, so there's the website where you can schedule that. And I don't know if maybe we could just put that link in the chat. Um, that would be would be useful. Um, one thing to note about the Accuplacer test, there are actually two parts to it. There's a math and a reading Accuplacer. Um, you, you don't have to do both parts. So depending on your situation, you may want to do both the math and the reading. But for most students, you would only want to take the math Accuplacer. So just make sure when you're signing up, that you pay attention to which one you're signing up for, you know, whether it's one or the other or both. Um, but for just talking about the, the math courses, it's just the math Accuplacer that you want to take. Um, it is possible to take that placement test remotely. Um, you would take it from home as long as there's a webcam um, because someone needs to observe you while you take the placement test. Um, you're able to do that. Um, and you can come take it in person at U of L. So um, if you go to that, that website right there, 
um, you can see the different options, select the one that's right for you and take the test. It is possible to retake the Accuplacer. So if you take it um, and think you could have done better, um, you can decide to take it again. Um, after a second time though, they do ask you to wait. Um, so I think it's a waiting period of three weeks. Um, I'm not, I'm not solid on that one. Um, so just, you know, kind of pay attention to that. It is okay to go ahead and retake it, but they don't want you to just take it over and over and over again. Um, cause that test, it is pretty accurate. So, uh, we want to retake it if your score is really close, maybe to the cutoff. Um, but it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to stay pretty consistent. Jordan, your question, if you submitted an ACT score, you don't have to take the AccuPlacer. Um, it's really up to you. If you know, the AccuPlacer could improve your situation, um, it could improve what math courses you're able to take or your admission situation. Um, so it's, it just kind of depends on what it could mean for you to, to take it. So um, you could get more information from your admissions counselor or from your um, uh, academic advisor at orientation about whether it's a good idea for you to take it or not. Um, there is also, there's another link here um, for how to study for the AccuPlacer. So the website there allows you to sign up for a study app where you can practice. Um, it's a good idea to study and practice for a few weeks before you take the test. Um, and this website, the college board is the company that makes the AccuPlacer. So you're, you're practicing and, and doing this with the people that make the test. And it's a free uh, study app. So um, you're, you're able to kind of simulate the real thing by, by doing that. Uh, okay, so um, kind of talked about some of these elements already for what does it mean to be a pre-unit student? Um, what's what's gonna be there for me? So as a pre-unit student, um, you, you see the exploratory and transition advisors, like I said, the, the team that I'm a part of. Um, so you'll meet with us to help plan your courses um, and helping make sure you're on track to, um, to get into the program that you're wanting to get into. So, uh, you know, we're not gonna waste any time. We're gonna try to do whatever we can to get you into that lower division. Um, and that puts you in the best situation to be ready to apply for upper division. Um, once you do transition to lower division, that does mean you change advising teams and you'll be advised by the advisors that also advise the upper division. And so those are gonna be the best folks to help you with that application to upper division. Um, and so we wanna make that transition as, as soon as we can um, to get you in. But in the meantime, um, I've got some pictures here to kind of show you the, the guides that we use. So these are spreadsheets just to give you an idea where we're going we're gonna to plug in the courses um, and track your progress toward those um, lower division requirements. All right, so moving from um, that pre-unit status to lower division, um, so it's actually the same requirement for both of these programs. So after your first semester, if your GPA, and that's your, your U of L GPA, um, if your GPA is 2.8 or higher, then you're able to change your major and join um, the lower division of, of those programs. So, uh, so it's pretty straightforward. You come in knock it out, have a great first semester, and then you're able to go on and switch into the lower division and continue progressing um, towards, towards finishing. Um, for dental hygiene, really every course that's required for lower division, every, every lower division course for dental hygiene is, is actually accessible. Um, it's not restricted to, to, to students that are only in dental hygiene. So you actually can take every course you need for lower division dental hygiene um, as a pre-dental hygiene student. Um, so that kind of helps with some of the anxiety about this. Um, I wanna throw that out. There are two courses in the lower division of nursing though that you do need to be admitted to lower division to take. Um, so you would need to be admitted to lower division by the end of that um, course sequence, but it's not like you have to be in there immediately to be able to actually take the courses that you need. 
but yeah, but one number to keep in mind, a 2.8 GPA. Um, U of L uses a system with pluses and minuses. So um, a B is a 3.0, a B minus is a 2.7. So a, a B minus average is actually just below what you would need. Um, and so a, a B average um, or better, you know, is kind of what you would be aiming for to be able to meet this requirement. But obviously a B is, is as good having an A and a C, that's as good as having one B. So as long as you're offsetting any C grade with an A, then you're able to maintain that 3.0 GPA. All right. Um, so looking ahead, um, you, you will have a orientation this summer. Um, so one thing that would be would be best done before uh, orientation would be to take that AccuPlacer exam. Um, like we said, um, you know, we had a question about ACT versus AccuPlacer. Um, it, it may be that you sh you don't need to take the AccuPlacer, but I would say every student should because it could mean you improve your situation. Um, you get yourself into a more advanced math course. Um, or potentially could go from the pre to um, to being admitted to lower division. So every student should take the AccuPlacer. It's not going to hurt to take it. Um, your best score kind of across the board is, is taken into account. Um, also make sure you submit your high school transcript, um, but also any test credit or dual enrollment credit. So um, if you've taken an AP test, um, and you already have that score, submit that score. I know if you're taking it this, this year, you won't have that AP score yet. Um, you would want to submit it after orientation, but make sure you at least talk to the advisor about the fact that you're expecting or, or planning to take an AP uh, test, IV test, um, whatever it may be. Um, and then also when it comes to dual enrollment, just to make sure we're clear about this, just because a course is on your high school transcript, U of L won't be giving you credit for it. You need to submit the college transcript that the course was taught through. So you may have, it may have been taught by a teacher at your high school, in your high school building, um, or over, you know, virtually from your high school. But if it's a college class, there's a college transcript associated with it. It needs to come from that college for us to give you credit for it. Um, It'd be great to come into orientation, kind of having thought about um, classes um, from high school, hobbies, jobs, volunteer work. Those are all things um, you know that can help us know more about your interests. Things that help us, you know, with um, looking at classes, thinking about um, routes to possible future careers. Um, you know, coming in as a pre-unit student. Um, you know, we have that possibility of, um, you know, with the upper division admission that maybe that's not going to work out. So it's good for us to think about alternatives um, and figure out alternatives at L that could also work for you. What are other majors, other interests that we could explore? And then you could be ready to transition to if you need to, not because it's not going to work out, but because it's always good to have alternative plans. And so those are things that you can work with your advisor to figure out. And then other things that could impact your fall schedule, um, things like your work, um, whether you're commuting or living on campus, um, those kinds of things, um, coming, you know, kind of prepared to talk about that with your um, advising as well. And there is with orientation, um, you know, you'll do a, a virtual module and there's a, a questionnaire that you complete as a part of that, that then goes to the advisor that you're going to meet with. Um, and so, you know, another good way to be prepared for orientation is just to, to give good answers. Um, you're, the, the better you can prepare your advisor by giving good answers to that questionnaire allows us to have a, a really good conversation with you um, when we do see you at orientation. Uh, okay, yeah, so at this point, um, any other questions that, that we have um, about um, the, the presentation, about the, the pre-dental, pre-nursing? Um, yeah, just speaking about a commute, if you're not living on campus, but are going to be driving from, from home to campus, um, you know, that's something we actually want to take into account. You know, how long are you going to spend, you know, driving 
um, you know, because it may be better for us to look at um, having classes kind of restricted to certain days. You know, you could do Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes only. Um, maybe having some online classes would be helpful if you're commuting. Um, and it also just helps us think about, okay, if it takes you 30 minutes to get to campus, is an 8 a.m. class really a good idea? You know, would you want to get up, you know, and leave the house by 7.30 to make sure you can, you can get to your class? Um, and so that's just information to help us think about the bigger picture of how, how your first semester as a college student is going to go. What ACT score will let you into Math 111? Good question. Um, so a 23, a 23 Math ACT would place you into Math 111. There are what are called um, supplemented sections of Math 111. Um, they're sections that meet an extra day a week um, and include some other restrictions. Um, you can actually take those if you have a 21 or 22 math ACT. Um, and so there is sort of that option. Um, it's only for first time freshmen only. Um, you know, the, the goal would be a 23 because then you'd be able to, to just take the regular versions of Math 111. Daniel, it looks like most of our questions were um, answered during the presentation. Um, so that's good. Alyssa says there's no questions from Facebook right now. So I guess if there's, um, we'll give them maybe 30, 40 seconds to, to speak up. Feel free to open your mic if you would like to ask your question out loud. Um, but I guess we'll give them a few more minutes and if not, we can wrap it up. Um, can we, um, Stop the screen share so that way we can see everyone um, for the question sure. portion. Sure. Awesome. Thank you. For some reason, my camera stopped working. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Um, yes, any other questions? If you are tuning in um, on the Facebook Live, feel free to submit those in the comment section on the live video. Um, if you're here in the Zoom room with us, you can type those questions in the chat or feel free to unmute yourself and ask those questions as well. Really great information, very, very helpful. All right, so it looks, um, hey Diamond, oh, we do have a question. Um, so the question is, what if you don't have a 23 in math? So in that case, you, you would have, um, the, you would just start at a, a lower level math course and progress through the sequence until you're able to complete that math 111 course. So I had, um, I had that slide, I can, share that again let's see another option is also um, just taking the math accuplacer um, so that way if you didn't meet that that 23 on the act you could take the math accuplacer score and potentially test into math 111 um, or higher with depending on your uh, <laughs> and, and part of that like diamond saying is that you're Part of taking the ACT is that you're sitting through all of those sections back to back to back. And sometimes it can be hard to do your best on one particular section, you know, when you're trying to juggle all of those different things and do your best. So taking the Accuplacer allows you to just focus on that one section. You're only doing math. Um, you, can, you can do that. Uh, um, so when, when should you do the Accuplacer? Um, you know, I think I would, Definitely, if you're going to think about taking it soon, at least spend a few weeks doing some studying using that study app that we shared earlier. Um, you might also want to think about what's going on with your your current math classes in high school. So if there's anything that you're still doing that could help you improve your math skills, I would wait until you're able to kind of complete that as well. So, you know, before orientation, 
is helpful, but you can take it after orientation as well. So you, um, you are gonna work with your advisor to register for classes at orientation, but your schedule can actually be changed um, through the beginning of the semester in the fall. So, so your, your situation with your math placement, with your test scores, that can also change later on in the summer um, going into the fall. So, um, so it's not like you're, you're set you know, before the summer starts, that's what it's going to have to be. And the acupuncture um, is cool because it um, it it's not a set um, a set type of questions. Um, the acupuncture kind of starts with what I'm going to call elementary math and moves you into the different categories as you answer questions correctly. Um, so, Daniel, you want to talk a little bit about how the acupuncture works? Um, yeah, it's it's called. Cool um, it's what's called an adaptive test. Um, it's, it's on a computer, so it's not like a pen and paper test, you know, where you're answering 50 questions or something like that. Um, yeah, it just poses you one question. If you, if you do well, it keeps giving you more questions. Um, it gets more difficult. Um, it's just trying to assess your level by giving you kind of progressively more, more complicated questions. Um, and so it means that, you know, it can take a, a varying amount of time. Um, it depends on, you know, how well you're doing. Uh, but that's also where I think, you know, maybe planning to take it more than once can be nice. You can take it once, get used to how the test works, um, take it a second time and, and improve on, on your performance. Um, how long does it take to be moved uh, up to lower division? I mean, it, it can be one, one semester. Um, as long as you have a 2.8 GPA after that first semester, you're able to move on to lower division. Um, you know, it, it can take longer for some students, you know, that first semester can be an adjustment period. Um, you know, if a class doesn't go well your first semester, maybe you need to retake it in your second semester to get a better grade or to raise your GPA. Um, but the requirements don't make you spend more than one semester in pre-nursing if you can do it. Um, I put this slide up, though, on the, the course sequencing because there was the question about, you know, if you don't start in algebra, um, what would that mean? Um, so you have the Gym 103 and Gym 104 courses that you would take. So you may be able to start in Gym 104, depending on your math scores. So you would complete Gym 104 in the next semester, take Math 111, um, or you may be placing into Gym 103 and starting there. Daniel, I'm not sure if you saw the newest question. Um, will a student be behind if they start the lower division in the second semester instead of being admitted directly to lower division? Sorry. Um, I mean, the, the main thing that you need to progress through the lower division is taking the biology and chemistry courses. Um, the, the backbone of the lower division curriculum is taking biology and chemistry and then you take more advanced biology and chemistry, and then that allows you to take the final nursing courses um, that you need to finish lower division. So as long as you're progressing through biology and chemistry courses, um, you're not behind. Um, and so the, as long as you don't, as long as you take a biology or chemistry in your first semester, are able to pass it and move on to the, the next, you know, math, uh, the next science courses in your second semester, and so on, then you're not behind. So it, that's, there's not a difference there between I'm pre-nursing versus I'm lower division, because um, you can take those courses either way. Um, the, the question, Lauren, uh, one of the slides um, for nursing, you needed 2.8. Um, I thought you needed 3.0. That's a difference between the high school GPA for admission versus the, the two point, the, the college GPA to move from pre-nursing to lower division. So to start immediately as a lower division nursing student, it's a 3.0 high school GPA. Um, if you're already starting at UofL as a pre-nursing student or an undecided student or, or whatever major, to switch into lower division, it's a 2.8 UofL GPA. 
So it's just two different GPAs that we're talking about for two different situations. Just go on the fast train. Do. Um, I mean, if you're if you're not if you're not starting in lower division, you're going to start as a pre nursing student, and really it doesn't matter what classes you take in your first semester, as long as you have a two point eight GPA, you can switch into lower division. I think that Vivian is more so asking what can they do now to be moved from pre to lower division before the semester starts. So that that would be. Um, the you know the admission requirement there so if you're able to if you're able to meet these admission requirements um then you can you know change your admission status now from pre-nursing to lower division um but that would be the only way you know at this point that you'd be able to do that otherwise you would just start at U of L as a pre-nursing student have a great first semester and then in your second semester be a lower division student but you're not going to take any different courses your first semester as a pre-nursing student versus what you would take as a lower division student. So just for clarity, if I am a high school graduate with a 3.0 GPA, but my ACT score was a 20, I could take the Accuplacer and receive a 250 QRAS score and a reading Accuplacer score of 244 and then be admitted directly to nursing. Um, because I have the high school GPA and then I meet the Accuplacer score. If your high school GPA is below a 3.0, then taking Accuplacer wouldn't, wouldn't change anything. Um, but if, you're, if what's missing there is um, the ACT score, then you could take Accuplacer to kind of meet that other requirement. All right, y'all. So we, uh, these are really great questions. Um, I know we only have uh, just a few moments left. So I want um, everyone to um, just be reassured that we will have more information on um, the AccuPlacer and um, all of that information coming from the Office of Admissions here um, within the next few days. So just sit tight uh, for more information on that. Um, and you can also reach out to your admissions counselor um, if you have any other questions about um, prepping for the AccuPlacer or other questions relating to um, your um, academic plans. Um, so with the time we have left, um, I'm looking to see if we have any other questions in the chat and on. We do have one more, uh, one more question. Um, how would a student be moved from pre to lower division if they meet that other requirement on, on the admission side. So the, the question specifically is, well, I need to talk to my admissions counselor to talk to her about being put into lower division. Um, I would say yes, reach out to your admissions counselor to um, talk about that. Um, and if you do end up meeting the requirements to be um, moved from pre-nursing to lower division, they can um, re-review your application um, and go through that process. So definitely be in touch with your admissions counselor. Um, and Allie um, looks like just put the um, link to find your personal admissions counselor in the chat. We can also put that in the Facebook comments as well. Um, but no matter where you're from, um, everyone has an admissions counselor assigned to them. Um, they are super helpful and a really good resource to use going forward as you um, go through your journey and becoming a cardinal this fall. I'm going to give it just a couple more moments for any other questions. Um, th this information is really helpful. Um, we want to thank you all for attending the pre-nursing and pre-dental hygiene information session and hope that you learned a lot of valuable information. Um, be on the lookout for a survey. If you're attending this event on uh, the Zoom meeting with us, um, we're going to send you a survey um, over the next few days so that we can get your insight on the event um, and how we can continue to provide these opportunities for you all to learn <laughs> more about the University of Louisville. Um, we're also hosting more of these events throughout the month of, the, 
month of March, excuse me. Um, so if you are thinking about another academic program or maybe you're considering minoring in something, um, take a look at our website. We have um, some upcoming events available for you to learn more. And we're also available for um, in-person on-campus tours. You can check out our website for those opportunities and we can link the website in the chat and in the comments. Um, again, if you have any other questions following this event, please make sure to reach out to your personal admissions counselor. We are always happy to help. I am looking at uh, the Facebook comments and the comments here, and I don't see any other questions. So once again, thank you to our guests here for um, sharing all of this really helpful information um, with us. And thank you all for attending and go cards. <laughs>